Uh, good evening, everyone. Welcome to the Town of Camden Select Board meeting for, excuse me, I have the wrong agenda in front of me, September 19th, 2023. Um, we are broadcasting live on Spectrum Cable TV channel 3, 1303. Um, and we are streamed at, uh, on YouTube. Also, you can join us via Zoom. Um, and we do not monitor the chat function um, on Zoom, but uh, if you uh, raise your hand, we can bring you in. Uh, first uh, agenda item tonight is public comment on non-agenda items. Do we have anybody from the public that would wish to speak on non-agenda items? Seeing none, we move on to agenda item number two, which is uh, the approval of the board minutes for September 5th. And I don't think those are included in our packet. Is that correct? I did not see them. I didn't see them in there. Okay. So uh, we're going to move on from approval of board minutes for September 5th, move on to agenda item number three, uh, select board reports. Allison, would you like to go first? Um, I am going to pass on that tonight. I know it's shocking, but. Okay. Uh, Chris? Uh, I have no comment. Stephanie, anything? I don't have anything to comment except that there's the cemetery, the library, the planning board all coming up this week. So hopefully next time I'll have a report of something. Thank you. Uh, I have the similar uh, planning board Thursday at 5 p.m. Uh, via Zoom if you want to. And you can find that on the town website if you'd like to join the planning uh, board meeting on Thursday at 5 p.m. Uh, Audra, manager's report. So before we do that, Sophie's trying to get on. Oh. So we, we're having a few Zoom things going on, trying to get her on. Okay. We'll take a brief recess here to see if we can get Sophie on. All right, everyone. Um, we're going to come back into session here. I apologize for the delay. <clears throat> I believe we're on item number four, manager's report. My microphone on. So uh, I had a meeting with uh, MDOT about both the Springbrook Bridge project and the Main Street Bridge replacement project. So on Wednesday, this this coming Wednesday, the 20th, MDOT will be advertising uh, bids for construction for the Springbrook Bridge on Route 1 or Belfast Road. So the bridge has been separated from the uh, larger Route 1 North project. So they're doing them. Um, they're, they're going to do the bridge first, and then they're going to do the rest of the project after that and advertise them separately. Uh, they're also going to begin the vegetation removal around the Springbrook Hill area. So that's just the area adjacent to the bridge and where the new bridge alignment will be. And that's going to happen starting on November 1st to December 31st. So if people see crews out there removing vegetation, that's what, it, what that's for. In terms of the uh, Main Street Bridge replacement project, uh, they're going to be opening up a public comment period for that. So it's, it's the new way that MDOT does public meetings. So they're going to start that on October 4th, and that'll run until October 23rd. And so we'll help get information out on how people can participate. So it all runs through MDOT's public involvement website. And um, we'll have links to that on the town's website and our social media and, and uh, also something through local media. And they gave me a little bit of an update that they met with many of the property owners who are on or around the bridge. And um, they, there's still a few that they need to speak to. They're also anticipating that it's going to take um, sort of from the end of their public comment period to late 2025 to arrive at uh, the final design phase. And that in-between period, a lot of that is going to be spent um, just negotiating with property owners. So it'll be the MDOT's property office that will be working with people, which is different from the project manager. And they anticipate advertising for construction in 2026 for this project. And they're also aware of um, the water main replacement and the fact that that needs to be done around the same time. Uh, another, uh, so on to another topic. So we're seeing a lot more um, projects around town where we have private property owners who are sort of blocking and filling drainage inf infrastructure. So it might be like swales or ditches or, you know, areas around culverts. 
So we're just asking that if anybody is looking to do any work sort of adjacent to the roadway, just make sure that whatever you're doing is outside of the right of way. And people can call in to ask us where that is. And I'm sure Public Works would be happy to show people so that they aren't filling in ditches and causing other sort of um, drainage issues. And I think this is going to be something that we need to speak about because it's, it's getting quite costly having to go around and sort of redo these areas that have been filled in and landscaped by private property owners when you know, the drainage system has been changed. Uh, we've been talking about um, scheduling the uh, open house for the treatment plant. Uh, it's not, the plan isn't quite done. There's some punch list items that the contractor is still going over, but we've set sort of a tentative date of October 26 for some sort of open house in partnership with um, Rural Development, who is our funding partner on this project. So we can, you know, we can talk about this a little bit more. It would be ideal if it could happen before sunset because, you know, a lot of it is walking from building to building on site and it would be pretty dark and it could be difficult if we have a lot of people there and it's, it's um, the sun is going down. So we need to sort of work out the details and, and coordinate this with the school as well because they're so close to that facility. Um, so a little bit in terms of uh, tropical storm or hurricane Lee. So we're still going around and doing cleanup for a lot of the downed trees that um, were in the right of way. So Public Works has a mobile chipper they're using um, to sort of clear this brush. So unfortunately, we can't take uh, any brush or trees that are downed on private property, but anything in the right of way we can help out with. And uh, I really appreciate everybody's patience in relation to the power outages. Uh, I also understand there's a desire for the town to um, take a more active role in communicating uh, in regards to where CMP is in relation to restore, restoring service. And, you know, this really wasn't, unfortunately, just during this storm, it wasn't possible. The town office was without power. Many of us that live in, in Camden also lost power and internet. And generally, we really don't receive communication from CMP above and beyond what residents receive when they sign up for text alerts or the information that's publicly available on their website. We, we're not in sort of a privileged position where we get more or better information. You know, occasionally when there's an outage, like a town employee will cross paths with line crews who might tell them information about, you know, when something's going to be on. Um, but really, it's pretty rare that this happens, and it's not sort of like a reliable system to get updates out to people. So you know, I, I wish we could get people more and better information from CMP, but we're really treated just like any other customer. Um, also the public, we have uh, about $60,000 in grants that we're gonna be receiving for the uh, design and engineering work on the public landing. Uh, and that's to develop bid ready construction plans and documents. So I can't make an announcement about where the sources are fund of funding are from because our funding partner in this uh, hasn't made a public announcement yet, but we'll talk about this more in the weeks to come when they make their formal announcement about the funding. I know that's a bit ominous, but it isn't. It's a, it's a very positive thing. Thank you, Audra. Uh, Agenda item number five tonight is public hearing for liquor licenses 5A application for of Camden Island for a renewal class one liquor license to serve beer, wine, and spirits on premises. Is there anybody from Camden Island here to speak on this agenda item? Seeing none, I move to the board for deliberation. Chris. In the in our in our documentation we had an additional item under the management report concerning the submerged land piece. Oh, sorry, and I forgot to, to bring, that bring that up. To re are we gonna backtrack? Go ahead. Yes. Yeah, my apologies. Thank you for bringing that up, Chris. So, you know, from time to time, we'll get correspondence from the state when there's, um, you know, a permit. And uh, this is a sort of an example of a submerged land lease. Typically, it's from DEP when there's, you know, some sort of project um, on private property that has a public impact or it's somebody who's doing something you know, like in a, a public resource, but it's, you know, like a, um, you know, not a public entity that's doing a project. So this was one of those examples. Unfortunately, the, the comment period was really, really narrow because it was existing infrastructure and they're renewing an old lease from um, 
before this program even existed. So by the time we got the letter and by the time the public comment period ended, it was just between select board meetings, but we wanted to make everybody aware of it um, and start bringing this, this type of correspondence to the select board so that people have, you know, just so that they get more um, awareness around them than what they've been receiving. The submerged land lease is about the t tide water line that goes along or under Hook Lake along 52. Allison? Um, yeah, I, I feel like a lot of the time um, there's like these, uh, these state processes that have a public comment period and then by the time anybody finds out about them here, it's, we've missed it. I, and that's, I see why that happened here. It would be great if we could find a way to make, um, especially like with peers and different, there's all kinds of different things where um, even like the wastewater treatment license um, renewal stuff, where if, if we, I like the idea of putting these letters in packets or doing something just to help let people know when public comment periods begin. So I can see this one was. When did the town receive this one? I see it's dated September 1st, but when did the town actually get it? Oh, it was probably, it was, I think, a week after. So we don't, this is something, we're just a, a entity that can provide comment here. We don't. Right. Um, maybe we could just provide some feedback to them that that's not really enough time for us yeah, to provide I, comment. I called, I called the office today. I wasn't able to get the um, project officer who's listed on the, um, on the letter just to talk to her about, you know, that it was, this was our first opportunity to put in front of the select board to get any public feedback and that there might be some interest in the community in doing that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But okay. nobody was there. It's interesting. I didn't know there was a cable yeah. in the lake. Yeah, it's, yeah, a, it's an important either. cable. It provides uh, uh, fiber communications ring uh, that's supportive of uh, Tidewire Telecoms technology that they bring and it's part of why there's the house down there, duck prep. Um, so is it the way that it connects, it, like that Lincolnville gets <clears throat> all of their... No, no. I would, it's not the way they get all of their communications. However, it provides one leg of a fiber optic sonnet ring mm -hmm. uh, that allows for redundant uh, telephone delivery communications for Tidewater. It was a project that was done in 1993 around 1993 with, with AT&T. Huh. That's cool. the reason for the duck trap uh, Tidewater house. House? Yeah, the little, little building there on, on, uh, in duck trap in Lincolnville. Oh, all right. I'll have to, I'm it's curious, but I'll ask you questions not to you, 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 can, you can talk to me so. later about that specific okay. project. Thank you. Thank you, Audra. Um, item 5A. Application for a liquor license for Camden Island. Uh, I'll make a motion that we approve. Second. Well, I, be, oh, I, sorry. I, uh, motion made and seconded. Discussion. I, I, I would like to mention that I don't feel like this application is complete. Right. Um, I do notice that uh, he didn't do a floor plan. There's uh, what distance from the premises to the nearest school is not applicable, is, is what he writes. Um, these are requirements for our liquor license that are incomplete. Any other yeah. comments? Oof. Yeah, I we have a motion made and seconded to uh, approve it. All those in favor of approving it? Sophie, can you hear? So it's the state that we are, what we do, just to remind myself, we recommend to the state whether or not they approve it is that correct yes yes we're not the licensing so body there's obvious. an additional level of review that happens this is our application and it's incomplete no, it's the in my states. opinion okay it, it, the, this application is incomplete in my opinion all those in favor of uh, approval where are you seeing that? um let me, uh, page let me. 13 is where he said it goes na on the distance to the nearest school and page 15 is where he fails to fill, fill in the floor plan the applicant whoever the applicant um, is well 
Hey, Sophie. Hi, Sophie. Yeah. Hi. So. Oh, there's a delay. I can I can see now. Okay. So, um, if the application is incomplete, I think they, they should resubmit with the with the complete application. That's what we ask every applicant to do. I don't see why it should be different from Camden Island. And it's not the first time he applies. He, he knows the form. I, I think it's it's fair that we hold everybody to the same standard. We have motion made and seconded. Um, all those in favor of approval. Opposed? Um, five zero, motion does not carry. Item 5B, application of Blue Harbor House Inn at 67 Elm Street for a renewal of a class five bed and breakfast liquor license to serve wine on pre premises. Is there anybody from Blue Harbor House to speak on behalf of this application? Seeing none, I move to deliberation on the board. I just noticed that breakfast is spelled quite wrong, but is that like a form that we have that we spell it wrong every single time, or is it? It's a small thing, but bed and breakfast. But other than, other than that, I'm supportive. Anybody else on the board? So um, on the application, um, did you just say under the business name that her blur, the blur Harbor House Inn was spelled incorrectly? Is that oh, what you just said? No, but okay. I, is that, is that, I was just yes. up here from the, the memo at the beginning. And that is the only thing that I had marked on that. That would just need to be updated. Mm -hmm. That's it. Okay, given that with a, with a correcting a typo, board anything else? Sophie? Yeah, I agree. We can, we can make a motion that we approve Blue Harbor House in uh, application for um, liquor license. Uh, second. Motion made and seconded. All those in favor? 5 0. Motion carries. Thank you. Uh, item 5C approval of 2023 2024 general assistance appendices. So just to give you a little bit of um, background on this, uh, we adopt the state's guidelines for uh, general assistance. We are also able to you know, be a little bit flexible because we don't take any reimbursement from the state, but we, you know, I try our very best to follow the state guidelines as closely as we can. Anybody on the board wish to speak on this? Anybody from the public wish to speak on this? I would move that we approve it. I'll second that. Motion made and seconded. All those in favor? Five, five zero. Thank you, Sophie. Motion carries. Item six on tonight's agenda is a public hearing for the acceptance of the gift uh, for the Montgomery repair, repairs. Uh, a gift that's been offered by the Montgomery family. Um, and uh, Audra, would you give us the introduction on this? Uh, certainly. So um, after the meeting where um, we initially talked about uh, the gift, I was in contact with uh, the Montgomery's and their attorney about a scope of work. And so we received um, a scope of work for masonry repairs to the, uh, the granite wall and the sluiceway of the dam. Um, we, as we talked about before, we had a new gate that was fabricated. So um, this would also cover the installation of that new gate. And that can happen, we just spoke with a contractor that could happen before the winter. Um, we also talked about uh, some cleanup of the, the island area, some landscaping work um, to that. And in order to access that, we, we need some sort of seasonal gangway for people to be able to get out there and, and bring out um, you know, tools and haul vegetation off. So it would include um, you know, the installation of that um, as well as the landscaping. The one thing that, that wasn't included in the quote that uh, the public works director wanted me to mention was um, any sort of you know, footings to put the gangway on that really wasn't included in, in um, 
Tom Jackson's quote. He he had the actual building of the the gate of the uh, gangway itself, and then the work that he was proposing to do on the island in terms of uh, you know vegetation management and and other landscaping. Thank you, board. Any comments on this? Oh, and also just to um, just to make another point, uh, Bill Kelly reminded me that. Um, we have to we have to do this as a public hearing by ordinance. Any acceptance that the select board does of gifts. So on the construction end, and I saw that too. That it that the quote didn't account for footings on either end, and any of that's at additional cost. Where is that additional cost? That will there will be some. Where is that coming from? I mean, that's for all of you to decide and to talk about with, you know, with the Montgomery family. Well, uh, go ahead, Allison, please. So when I saw the, the plan in the packet, I was like, oh, this is pleasantly surprising. It looks like maybe it, they've worked something out. Tom Jackson, not going to find anybody better really to come up with a plan. I would prefer personally to for all of us maybe to stay out of it as much as possible and for them to, was that just a, an, an oversight about the footings or is that something that can be? I think that, that they're gonna have to get the gangway and then you know, have a, like an understanding of how it's, gonna, you know, how it's gonna span that area and can you it know, just he's go just gonna to need the... to be able to see that a little bit more I think before he, comes up with any, you know, more fine-tuned estimate about the cost of that. That's something that could be, can we approve it in a, in a general sense and allow modifications as permissible by the, the family? I, I think that's sort of up to them if they're, you know, if that's, if, if they're comfortable with that level of flexibility, I guess. Holly or Lee or Dave, could we get one of you to come up to the podium please or is there any is there any avenue for the town to cover the footing costs in this like i said that's that's up to all of you if that's something that you want to consider okay sophie do you have anything i i do i, I was slightly i, I have it's more a question for audra so the, the, the agreement says that the estate shall give the sum of $157,000. But I, I, I always feel that when you talk about construction, hmm. um, it, it, it usually comes above budget and, and outside of the scope of time. So I was wondering if we couldn't have a little flexibility in the agreement, especially since the Montgomery family has made a proposal to gift the town with $200,000, so maybe rephrase it up to $200,000 and maybe allocate for the, the footing to be included in, in that little, you know, $43,000 gap or, or balance that we have. Not 43, but mm -hmm. math. Um, uh, there, could there just be a process where they would review once Tom Jackson gives an updated quote or something that there would be a process for approval before anything was spent if so Dave you're gonna to have to turn your microphone to green the button and then introduce yourself please uh, my name is Dave Perkins I'm the Montgomery's attorney so um, we did think this was going to be simple um, <laughs> we asked we understood that the council selectmen were saying uh, drill down get quotes and we got quotes from the town we approved the quotes we wrote up a very simple agreement saying we took the high end of the two quotes, put that in the agreement, sent it to the town manager, and we thought we were done. Um, so here we are. I guess something was not covered. Um, this hasn't come up to us before. I know we're putting you on the spot. There's a couple things we could do here in my mind. We could, we could approve this gift or vote to approve it, um, and then come back to you for footings. Um, I know we're putting you right on the spot on that. Yeah, no, that's fine. I mean, we just don't want to keep doing this, but okay. um, yeah. <laughs> neither do you. Right? Or, or we could do something like Sophie recommended, which is up to a certain amount, and then obviously, you know, con 
if there's a footing cost. Okay. Yeah. yeah, and or, or another option would be um, you could hold the line where you are and, and make somebody else responsible for the footings. Uh, those are just three ideas. I'm sure there's Do more. Do we know for sure those are the that three. footings are necessary? Or? Yeah. Well, I mean, I just yeah, feel like we're, we're not, not the right to... ones to evaluate that. Like, I wish Tom Jackson <laughs> would say, this is what I think you need to do. Do we have enough money for this or not? Yeah, yeah. do that something. Yeah. Yeah. And Davey, like you said, it's, and Stephanie, go ahead. Yeah, I mean, I know that um, this has been going back and forth um, since two meetings ago, and um, I kind of feel like this should have been a discussion before the meeting tonight. So um, did Dave give any sort of um, indication on how much it would cost? Is it a big cost? You mean Tom Jackson? Tom or Dave? I, have, they I honestly have no idea. With that? Yeah, I don't, I don't know. Oh, that is so unfortunate. Why don't we approve it and they can look at it and if it needs to, if, it's, if they aren't able to figure out a way to make it work and there needs, it can come back to us if there's so, something I did have a chance to talk Please. to them so um, we got the quotes we picked the high end of the quotes that's the gift that we're offering um, if the town has to pay for some footings or do some other things beyond this we'd like to be clear that that's uh, obviously anybody can come back but we don't want to leave the expectation tonight that we're going to keep having new conversations um, because on our end we were very quick to respond and accepted what the town sent us. We asked some questions, but we didn't really get good feedback, but we accepted what the town sent us. So we don't wanna keep doing this. Understood, thank you. Yeah. There are some issues over there in terms of just the boulders that have started to erode and various things that I feel like the town may have to fix anyway. Um, the idea that the town's gonna to be without expense on this is, is probably naive. I mean, there's uh, when, when we when we landscape that area, there's going to be some slippery granite. The water level changes around there. Um, there could be need for handrails or some type of. I mean, we still we we do have to dredge that impoundment because putting in a new gate where you know we have debris and mud. I'm not talking about the impoundment. I'm talking about the bridge in the island. Oh, yeah. No, I'm, you know, I'm like, just saying in yeah, general in, yeah. in money. regards to this project, there okay. are other things that we need to, to do that are all part of it. We were going to try to improve that area a little bit with the garden club anyway as part of the rescinding of the parking agreement. There is, I mean, there's a little bit of, of neglect over there. I tend to think that if it would be better if it's not all us micromanaging it tonight, not looking at it, They're, that we say, okay, there's, there's the amount of money, they can work it out. If something is gonna cost the town money, then it comes back to us, but that maybe there's, I don't know, I hesitate to make it more complicated than. I, I kind of feel the same way, Allison. I kind of feel like this is a really great plan. Um, like Tom said, um, there's sure to be unexpected things that come up. This is the first thing. Um, I'm, I'm not on board with micromanaging this. We've never had the privy here as the board to micromanage anything that happens down there. Um, to do with the gate. That's why I made the motion last time because I do feel like it is between the Montgomery's and um, the public works and the dam management team. So I certainly don't want to um, put this on hold any longer because there's things that are gonna come up. It's just the way it is. My question is just, you know, is there a provision if we need some money from the town to go ahead and buy a footing do we have a, a way to do that we have a way to do that so how about how about there we go we just move forward with this if there's anything that comes up that i think that you all need to know about i'll tell you about it and if you need to approve anything additional i'll come to you with it then there's that montgomery reserve 
account that was set up by the budget committee. Um, that, that area has been so heavily trafficked that it's, the grass isn't growing anymore. There's, there may be things that the town was going to have to do in its normal course of maintenance anyway. There's, uh, there's, we got a lot of options here. I'm, you know, I was just like you can pointing that out. out so everybody knew ahead of time about the footings issue, but it's not insurmountable. Right. I, like I said, I don't want to guess how much it's going to cost, but I'm not, I don't think that anything is going to be prohibitive of moving forward with all of this. Okay. It is, I uh, just ahead, wanted to mention one other thing. We did send to Audra a very simple agreement that has the, um, the dollar amounts that, we, that the Montgomery's would gift, it has a one year time frame for the town doing it's it. It's in the packet, yes. And so if there's a motion, if that could basically utilize the agreement, that's what we had in mind. You could do something, but we tried to be as precise as we could be. Thank you, it's very clear. Uh, if yeah. something breaks down and we're un unable to spend all the money, then it goes back to them anyway. I mean, things can go wrong and they'll have the opportunity to get the money back and it seemed like the agreement looked pretty good to me i agree i, I will say it is disappointing that i mean this is the first time we're hearing of it you, nobody would realistically think that you would put a bridge anywhere and not in both ends uh, i i find it hard to believe that we got all the way to this point without either tom jackson or somebody at the town saying there's something not included i mean these can't just set the bridge on the grass on one end and the ledge on the other. Um, I think if Dave were here, it would probably be easier. All the everybody's <clears throat> having trouble getting into the meeting. Um, okay. Uh, anybody from the public that would like to comment on this gift offer, please come forward. Jean Brewer, uh, Camden resident. I'm, I think that we have a, a large group right here on this side of the room that is prepared to give a thumbs up to this. We've all looked at it. And rather than use a lot of time for a lot of comments, if it looks like it's going to be a go, we could hold back on further comments that would just be saying we're in favor of it. So I don't know if that's helpful. I don't want to not have it happen because we don't each speak, but just wanted to put that out there and see if that's a, a way to support this wonderful generosity of this family. And they've been, you know, in our community for so long, for generations, that I think it's um, just, we should just accept this graciously. And they're very humble about the gift and I'd like to just see it go forward. And if you want to hear from all of us, we could all come up. Uh, but, you know, it may be, could we show a hand, have a show of hands just so we know how many people are supporting it so that it just Great. Thank you, pretty Jean. much the whole room. Thank you, Gene. Anybody else that, from the public that would like to comment? Ron, please. Ron Hawkins. Camden resident. Uh, just one question. What does the word seasonal mean with regard to the bridge? It'll come out for the winter. And when will it, so that, are we assuming it's going back in every, every summer? Yes. If we want to do, if we want to continue to do maintenance and prune the island and keep it maintained. So this is not a bridge to provide public access to the island. It will provide public access to the ah, island. Now we know. <laughs> that's, the, that's something I think we should talk about. This is not just a bridge to do maintenance and landscaping on the island. This is something else. Just to have that question. Sure. Karen? Karen Grove, Camden resident. Uh, we all came here with the understanding that this bridge was just for maintenance purpose. I think the select board needs to take a, a, a real close look at this if it's going to be for public access because the possibility of liability. 
is enormous. The possibility of little kids running the bridge, tripping, falling, you know, anybody thinking that they want, want to walk the rail of the bridge. I mean, it just opens up a whole world of possible lawsuits. So please don't make this public access. Just stick with what we had all agreed or thought we understood that it's for the maintenance purpose and it's not going to be open to the public. Thank you. Thank you, Karen. Oh, by the way, thank you, Montgomery. Allison. I guess my, what I was envisioning was something that would be placed there and that there would be, like you see in a lot of places where there's a, like, almost like a viewing area where it can be closed. So it wouldn't be like encouraging access to the whole thing, but it would be a way to, rather than having them take it off and put it back on over and over again, that it could be just a place that people, it could be there and that people would be able to, to stand there. Is that not what? Yeah. I mean, one thing is that, because I got the feedback that I got today from people was that, oh, wow, this is awesome that, like, this is something that's in our comprehensive plan that's in so many things that the people have, the downtown master plan, every public input exercise that I've never actually been involved in because it was before I was very involved, has always said that that was a goal of the town was to provide access there because people do want to be able to see it from different areas. Um, and they've argued over the design for years and years. Um, so I was, when I saw that, I was like, oh my gosh, the Montgomery's are going to do that. That's, that's going to solve like this long stagnate in the community where nobody could agree on the bridge design. And this is just a seasonal thing that can go away that allows it to, you know, it could be closed off and, um, but it allows that to be experimented with a little bit. And to be able to see that area from a different vantage point, I thought, oh my gosh, the Montgomery's are going to end up solving this thing that the community has been arguing about. Um, so that, the idea of it just, I didn't realize it would just be there for like a day and then taken down. Yeah, because we're going to have to crane it in and out like we do with the float, you know, like float removal time of year. Stephanie. So um, in looking at this, I had those thoughts as well, but I see these as two separate issues. I see this as the gift, and this is the plan that's set in front of us. When the end result comes and we have this um, item in the harbor, um, I feel like we have a team of people that understand the risk to the town that always makes these calls. So I'm not sure right now we're at a point to decide is it going to be closed off to the public or is it not? And I'm not 100% sure right now um, if I even really want to have that conversation because we just don't know. Right. Could we decide that late? I guess to right. unpair those things, it could be right. a decision later on whether it's opened or not. Holly. Yeah, I'm Holly Rutland, and it's really clear this bridge is on the Tom Jackson landscape estimate that he needs to safely get his crew on the island and get the debris off the island. It's going to be constructed for that. It's not for public access. It's not to be up there as a permanent bridge. It's strictly for maintenance for Tom Jackson to do the job of our gift. One time? Or on a it is a maintenance bridge that is used for a landscaper to go over on the island and the waterfall and clean up and get the debris off and get his crew over safely. That's what it is. It's on the Tom Jackson estimate for his work. It's not, it's not so designed it and constructed and for the public. So how are we, as a town, continue with the maintenance afterwards? Because it, it would go back in and out like Hopefully. a couple times each year? Maintain. Well, we can't get out there to do the maintenance. That's what the bridge is for. 
but then the bridge but, would have to go away. Hold on, away. just a moment. Just a moment, Holly. Uh, if you want to speak, you have to come up to the microphone. And um, I just don't understand how we could continue to maintain. I'm gonna. I'm gonna just get pause here for a second. I'm just gonna ask everybody to act, to raise the standards here just a little bit, okay? Like let's have a let's have a discourse here where we're we're asking questions and, and you know we're getting answers, but we're not speaking in any manners that are negative or condescending, okay? Um, all right, go ahead, please. I, I, I guess I'm just hopeful that what this would allow us to do is come up with a sustainable solution so that, um, because for years, people want that area to be landscaped in a, in, a, in a nicer way, and I don't, can't envision exactly what that means, whether that's weed whacking or taking down trees, or, but I would trust that somebody like, you know, whatever Tom Jackson thinks is gonna look better out there, and you guys agree, makes sense to me. Um, whether or not the town, in, and I think it'll look great for a little bit, and then it will need ongoing work. And so, to, if the level of expectation for how that's maintained is raised, we need a way for either the town employees to be able to continue to do that or for a commitment that that it would be financed in some other way so that when when tom jackson comes once a year he brings his bridge and then takes it away i'm just i'm worried that we will create something that looks great with no plan for continuing it if it means taking a ramp in and out um, I'm really happy that somebody is willing to donate the money to figure out how we can make this look nicer because it's been a complaint and there hasn't been a serious effort to really figure out, okay, well, what does it take to make that look nicer? So it's a great opportunity for the town and I just want to make sure that we don't create something that we can't sustain because... Well, there I, I, I suspect that there is probably a way that can, it can be maintained. As Audra said, floats are taken in and out uh, twice a year with a crane down there. Not to micromanage when the maintenance gets done, but that's probably pretty good timing to put your bridge in and take it out over those couple of days when it's there. Uh, it's not realistic to just have it there for a couple of days and no. take it out. I, I would suggest that we have public safety officers and we have insurance agents who do audits. You know, this is, this is the decisions that I think we can trust them to make um, when the bridge comes in, who has access to the bridge, um, and that sort of thing. I, I feel like I've said what, uh, that literally it's simple. It's on the Tom Jackson estimate. It's for the use t for him initially to clean up the island and the waterfall. And then the town has a um, bridge that allows that maintenance to continue. Oh, okay. Right. okay. Right. Thank you. So that makes more sense that then it's the town's decision how to use the bridge or? Mm -hmm. It's, a, it's, it's, it's I, so there are two different style of bridges. One is completely for public use and access and one is for landscape crew to come and go off the island. So that's what this bridge is for. So it's available for maintaining the island and the waterfall growth with the landscape company. And that's, we're doing, an, we're initially doing the cleanup with our gift. And we hope that the town continues to keep that standard up. Holly, Are do you understand that um, uh, once this is gifted to the town, if let's say we, we did bring our public safety officers out there and our insurance agents and they deemed that it was safe for the public to go out there and, or we wanted to modify the island in some way that allowed it to be safe, you know, sectioned off a viewing area or whatnot, is that okay? I mean, do you understand that that could be a possibility with this gift? Um, so Probably not with this bridge. Oh. You'd have to modify the bridge. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. The bridge is yeah. yours. The bridge will be yours. Okay. Thank you. 
Right. Thank you. All right. right. Ours. Yeah. Ours. Nuts. All right. Anybody else? Uh, Sophie, do you have anything? No, no, no. I'm good. Thank you. Yeah. Um, Ray Andres in Camden, and I think in some of the documents I've seen about this proposal and everything, is the word gangway is used instead of bridge. Mm -hmm. And I think that'd be a lot of more helpful and everybody understand what it, we're talking about. It's not a pedestrian bridge. It's not designed to be a pedestrian bridge. It's to send a work crew from one place to another. The town, I assume, will take possession of that gangway. Well, Ray, I, you're, it says footbridge. The, the estimate, Tom Jackson's estimate says footbridge. It doesn't say right, gangway. But I do think that in the correspondence that went between Audra and we're really the splitting numbers, it said here. gangway. Yeah. Yeah, we're really okay. splitting. So it's, that's a minor point. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Anybody else from the board? I get a motion. I'll make a motion that we um, accept this gift so graciously offered by the Montgomery family, um, per the agreement regarding the gift for the Montgomery Dam maintenance, as we have in our packet. I'll second that. Motion made and seconded. Further discussion. Really worry that there's uh, that if we're doing something and there isn't agreement about. I don't want this to turn into something where the Montgomerys feel it was. I don't know because some of the the feedback that I got was people being really excited about. I, I think the Montgomerys understand that once okay. they gift the bridge to the town, the town can de deem what the bridge is to be used for and the safety of the bridge. Right, just like the ramps that go down to the floats and stuff, we decide whether the public can go on those or not. Or... Sure. Okay, as long as we're clear as a, as a, as a board, I'm, I'm actually really excited to see the island all landscaped the way Tom Dax wants, so okay. I feel... Board, anything else? All those in favor? Five, zero. Lee and Holly, thank you so much. This is very generous, thank you. Thank you, guys. Thank your whole family, yeah. <clears throat> Good night. Thank you all. Thank you. Item number uh, seven on tonight's agenda, action items. 7A, appointments to the fiscal year 2025 budget committee. Audra. So I wanted to bring this in front of you because I, uh, and, and we'll talk about this during the discussion item. Um, I met with the Jody uh, Hanson, the finance, should I wait until everybody's out of there? Sure, we can help. pause. It's like a main tradition, the slamming screen door. <laughs> Even the new ones do it. <laughs> Action, 7A, thank you, Audra. All right, to get back to the, the item. So we'll, we'll talk about um, you know, the budget committee process, and I want to get some feedback from you when we get to the discussion item. Um, but when Jody Hansen and I met with uh, Jill Delano and Sarah Scrivenich, who are the um, current budget committee chairs, we had a, a good discussion about um, you know, process improvements. And, and one of the things that they wanted to see more of was, um, you know, some tours of the different departments and some meetings throughout the, you know, the year. So it's not all crammed into March. So the hope is that if we can do more to sort of educate the budget committee about, um, you know, the, the departments and how they work and, you know, a lot of the, um, type of information that we really uh, have been trying to cram all in as part of the budget process. It'll just make the, you know, the work of the budget committee easier in March and also what the, the select board's part is in all of that as well. And so um, in order to get going with, you know, some of those department tours and some of those meetings that are going to take place outside of, um, you know, the March budget review, we really need to appoint uh, new members to the budget committee or reappoint some of the the members who's who have been termed out that have um, that have been willing to serve additional terms and so in your packet we have um, 
a list of the the members who are current. The the one thing I realized today that we didn't have in there was um, Courtney Sukforth and Andy Scrivenich would like to serve another term. Those are the two, sorry, that want to come back. Yes. That was going to be my question. Thank yes. You. And then the other two are in your packet who we've gotten um, committee interest forms from. So it would be the reappointment of um, Andy Scrivenich and uh, Courtney Sukforth, and then the appointment of uh, Matthew Wolf and Mark Ratner. And then we'd have a full compliment. Mm. Oh, too easy. Board. Was there public notice out there somewhere um, that we had vacancies or is it just relying on the website for people to know that we have vacancies? Maybe are there, what's our marketing plan to try to get <laughs> others to get interest in being part of the budget committee? I mean, really, at this point, it's just the it's just the website. It's the website. Yeah, sometimes so it's we'll no. Puts... I, I, I disagree. We talked She's about. So uh, uh, we we've talked about. We talked about about vacancies on the budget. <laughs> Actually, every time we've spoken about the new ordinance and the new organization of the process, we have said publicly that we needed more people to apply. Oh, so nice. I think it's not just the the town website. To be fair, that is true. I had an, initially when I saw this, I was like, oh, but I didn't get to put out a thing saying like, you know, what, what are all those people that have told me in the past, maybe they would do it. And um, I think that in general, it relies on a lot of recruitment. The only thing that really works is recruitment sometimes. And that after I saw that, okay, they did sit, getting two new people to just, on their own, put in an application without being pressured, that's, that's kind of good. That, that's pretty, um, so I don't know that we need to make it a super competitive process. I would just hope that all of these tours. Um, that's under discussion. Okay. Oh, but I need to know this before I can decide on the people trying to trick me. Well, yeah, um, I just wasn't, I did, saw certainly that we've had the two who were in the packet. The other two, I don't right. believe, were in the packet. Mm -hmm. But I saw four openings, and I'm thinking, so what are we doing to, there may be other people in the town who are interested yeah. in serving on this committee and wanting a say, um, in which people feel, you know, certainly there's involvement by being on the committee. Um, people want to know, you know, about the pro process and public statement on the budget. Yeah. Uh, I did see some concern that, that was brought forward about making sure that the changes that we're looking to put into the overall budget process, that there is still plenty of room for public comment. I thought the way that, and our intent of the changes that we were looking to put in allow for that. Um, but then, you know, this uh, to me was a little tied together with people wanting to have the ability to comment and um, you know if there was a if the notification is just normal that people need to know by looking at the town website if they're interested in joining the budget committee that there are X number of openings I know there's a section on there about the different committees um, I, I wish there was a little bit more notice to say, hey, we're going to be accepting budget committee paperwork until X date. Mm -hmm, this is right. part of the process. Every year, we're going to do, you know, by October 1st, get your paperwork in um, so that there are options and, and interest. And then maybe if there's a flooding of applicants, maybe even discussion about having more people there, but as there used to be. Uh, Stephanie, and then you, Sophie. So that did actually um, bring me to my first thought when I was looking at this was on our ballot, we are asking the public um, to change the, bu the budget committee to be appointed. Mm -hmm. um, I think that's going to generate a lot of interest as well. 
So, sorry, just to just to make sure that's all clear. So we've already, we already did that in June. What we missed was there's a section in the charter that talks about the um, the warrant and the the different items on the warrant, and it talked about the election of budget committee members. So even though in the financial procedures in June it was changed from elected to appointed budget committee members, we missed that other section okay. where it talked oh. about the warrant. So we're just making so it's just wording. It basically. Well, we're making it consistent. Okay, with, yeah. that makes sense. That is helpful. That so, we're saying the same thing. Okay. Interesting. I'm not sure that that was underst understood by a few people that um, were emailing me about this, but I'm not, I don't have any, I'm good. That, but then it just goes to show you, we so often don't know what we're voting on. And even when we do know what we're voting on, we sometimes forget. I understood it then. But yeah. Sophie, go ahead. But I guess Thank I you. So I, I think huh. I've been on the budget committee for two years and I've been, this is my third year on the select board. And, and recruiting people to participate in the budget committee always yield exactly the same conversations we're having tonight. Like, if we advertise it more, will we get more people? I, I have, in my five years, I have not seen more people applying to the budget committee. I think um, it would be great if we had a full slate. It would be great if we, you know, we have, we have good quality applicants. I think uh, people who are interested in serving find a way to send us their application and make it known to us. I, I feel that it's not very fair to the people we put in the package and we weigh on applications to tell them, oh, we're going to wait a little bit more to see if we can get better applicants than you, basically. Um, and I think it, it could be discouraging to some people. Um, the other point is that we appoint people on the budget committee every year. So every year we have the opportunity to appoint another three or four people. So I think we have to be respectful of the people who are putting their names forward and are looking forward to serve and then for 2024 uh, if we want to craft a better process or we feel we need to craft a better process to yield more applicants let's do that for next year but for this year i think we're pretty lucky to have all these people wanting to serve again thank you sophie allison um sort of consistent with what Chris said, I advocated strongly for not reducing the size of the budget committee um, because I think that's the, that, that high number is what forces the town to look outside of itself. It's the reason I got put on the budget committee. It was because they were, you know, dust. Somebody was like, oh, we got to find somebody who can do it. I happened to be at a meeting. Leonard Luckner was like, hey, maybe Allison can look, you know, can do it. We had before a process that was, I think, even worse, which was a budget nominate budget committee nominating committee and so the select board would appoint people who were in charge of nominating people to the budget committee and the idea was that it would be done like the recruitment would be done thoughtfully and that worked for many years i think but then people get tired or maybe no fewer people and so every year they were coming and they were saying the budget nominating committee was coming to the select board and saying we're way short on people to bring forward to US nominations. And so it was this scramble at the end to grab more people, which I kind of liked because it just brought in new people that were like, okay. But nobody agreed with me on that. So, um, and most people find the budget committee to be a really kind of painful process. So I really liked it. I think that we should encourage more people to attend the budget committee meetings. What I didn't see happening much last time was like the idea that you know the public is invited to come to these meetings. And so if we could carve out a way in the process, so, um, so if, if department heads and town staff are gonna be taking all this time to show people everything, it would be a good opportunity to bring more people in, say, come to this, then people can see you know, they can give their input there too, to the budget committee and decide if they might like to do it in the future. So I would be fine with moving forward with these recommendations for now, if that's gonna be helpful. That, that's, that's, I think that's a great piece for the, the middle ground of at least saying that 
even if someone missed an opportunity to be on the committee, that they can attend the meetings and be part of that discussion somehow. I tend to really believe there actually are a lot of people out in town that are, would be more interested in participating if they're asked, mm -hmm. um, you know, but okay. so, but we, that's kind of our job too, to be recruiting people, I think. So Audra, are we, um, go ahead. Just, you know, one final thought. <laughs> it's highly likely, but between now and, you know, budget review, we'll have one or two people that mm -hmm. just can't right. commit right. the time. So, right. you know, this is, this is just to sort of like get us started and mm -hmm. get the meetings rolling. Um, but I, I wouldn't say that, I, I'm pretty confident this won't be the end of it and I'll come back to you and ask you to appoint other people. Yeah. I mean, and it, again, I was, I'm a little surprised to hear about the other two. Okay. I guess I couldn't, I didn't know that I could uh, assimilate that from the packet where the four openings and two applications if there's really two others that weren't in here. Um, so probably the packet needs to be up to date to show, okay, we've got four vacancies. There's more than just these two people. That, that would have been nice to know beforehand. Um, but you know, looking at the, the applicants who, do, who did apply, I think you know, pretty interesting and, um, experience. And certainly, you know, they both have uh, experience coming in, uh, some more locally, but and others in a different place. But um, certainly, a lot of a lot of interest. But yeah, it would have been nice to have these other two included in the packet as well. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> so, Audra, sorry, I, I feel like I swallowed a hair. <clears throat> uh, I didn't mean to get you all yeah, choked up, right. Tom, <clears throat> like that. It's, yeah, thank you for giving me a pause. <laughs> Matthew Wolf, is that what it is? Yep. Uh, Mark Ratner, Annie Scrivenich, and who's the fourth one? Courtney Sukforth. Okay. Yes, thank you. I'll make a motion to approve those four names that were just mentioned. A second. Motion made and seconded. <laughs> all those in favor? Five zero, thank you. <clears throat> laughing with you, Tom, not actually. I, I really don't oh. know what that is. Uh, it's coming back. <laughs> Here we go. Okay. Whatever that was, it's passing. Okay. Um, <laughs> item 7B, set a date for wastewater commissioners meeting. Audra. Yeah, so this is uh, just to follow up on the um, conversation. I think it was the last meeting yes. where um, mm -hmm. you were all saying it would be um, advantageous to have a meeting where it's, it's just wastewater commissioners and we talk about um, you know, basic information on the system, give you a presentation on that um, to lead into, you know, sort of more detailed discussions on, you know, what are the plans for the future moving forward uh, in regards to the wastewater collection system and any improvements we might need to make. Do you have a time frame that would work better for everybody that would be involved? Because it kind of yes. sounds like we want to dive deep into this. I don't yes. want to dive deep into wastewater. Anyway. So I think that um, if we could shoot for early November, that would be great because that would give, you know, we've got some, some um, you know, uh, changes to staff going on. So that would give us the time to, you know, get, get some new people in and, um, you know, develop the material that we're going to present to you all and, and get everybody comfortable with it and you get to meet them as well as part of all this. So the first week, the first through the fourth, uh, actually the first through the seventh, that's election. I feel like mm -hmm. town staff is going to be pretty stressed those first two weeks. Will they need time to recuperate for a few days after? Maybe the week of the 13th? You know, the, the people that... Okay. Um, the you. people that get stressed out from elections or well, actually like, let me you, think about you. it with the okay. transition. Yeah. Maybe the week of the 13th would be ideal. Yeah. yeah. Our, our, yeah. our meetings are the 7th and the 21st that month. So the, the 14th, excuse me, the 8th and the 21st that Thank month. You. Thank you, Stephanie. Mm -hmm. Sorry. So. I, I won't be down the, the week after the 13th. I'm, I'm traveling. Okay. What? Day does Thanksgiving fall on this year? Is it the 28th? 23rd. 
23rd. 23rd. Okay. Are you are you there? Are you around that week, Sophie? Thanks. Yeah, yeah, I'm just stopping in Guatemala the week of the okay. from the 13th to the 7th. So I can do the 20th if we're pushing it to the next. 20th on is good. That week. That would 20th? be the only week. 20th at what time? Any suggestion? Make my, make my decision. Chris? What Late afternoon would be best. Allison, can you go as... Monday the 20th? Is that what we're talking about here? Uh, can, can you go as early as 5 p.m.? Oh, five, I can do 5, sure. Five. <laughs> sure. Okay, 5 p.m. on November 20th? That's great. Thank you. Is, is this a... Will the public have a chance to ask questions as well? Because I know there is a lot of passion for this weather. So, are are, we is this, this the tour? An hour and a half, or is it what? What is this thing? Yeah. This is separate from the tour of the new facility, right? That we yes. are going to be. Right. Yeah. yeah. I feel like this should be a select board update from the facility, not a public comment. I think it's just going to be a lot of information. I think having public comment, as much as I want public comment, I'm not trying to say no public comment, but I think this particular one, my opinion would be I would like to have it be select board and the facility. Public can sit in if they want, but I would prefer it to be more of that kind of discussion. And, and we're really think like, we really want to develop a good presentation like you know everything like this is the sewer shed for this area and this area and right. it comes from here and goes to you know this pump station then goes to this pump station then goes to the tree all of that like basic basic stuff and um you know some for some of you it'll be interesting for some of you it will be pretty boring oh, um it's and terrible. it's all going to be something that uh will be available for the public to see and it could be something that we come back later and answer questions about. Yeah, so you're talking about mapping and capacity and performance monitoring yep. and viability of equipment and processes mm -hmm. and effects on personnel as far as resources that are available, not available, where things are tight. Um, all of that, I think, would be of interest. Mm -hmm. um, what it seems to have happened in the past when we've done this, where we don't allow the public to ask questions at one of our workshops, I understand the reasoning behind it, but I've always regretted that in the past because the number of people that show up are usually very, not very many, and they sit through it and it's almost like just more awkward than, um, than it needs to be because they will just say, oh, did I understand correctly that that, you know, goes here? Or it's, it just creates an awkward environment that, that causes more problems than it solves. It, I mean, maybe I'll be proven wrong and there'll be like so many people that are just burning with questions about it. But I, or... I don't think it should be a time for the people to, to weigh in on their, on their wastewater rates necessarily, like a public hearing kind of thing. We should create a different opportunity to do that. It's not the time to complain about your wastewater bill, but to come and just if somebody has a quick. Right. So the important thing is to establish what the agenda is going to be so that they understand this is about capacity, performance, how it's operating and having, you're right, having, not having people who might be of interest and maybe even asking a you know, very good question about some of the existing facilities and capacities. If we don't have that input, yes, you're right. We would fear leaving someone behind who is interested. Um, I, would, I agree that having time for people to learn and ask a question when we have the people who are managing the facility there and providing a presentation on, you know, it's not a very, uh, you know, it's not the most attractive thing for the town, but it's one of the most necessary things for the town to have. And, um, you know, it, it's, 
there are a lot of big issues. And so the more that the people in the town are aware and able to ask questions, we should definitely allow some time for that in that and we discussion. Could put a lim we could put a limit on if it looks like we just may, I think we might laugh at ourselves later if we realize there's only, you know, just like a couple of people that sometimes they, the, we could encourage the public if they have questions ahead of time or to try to communicate that through, through right. us so that we can manage that. But sometimes I find that the um, public has better questions than I think to ask yep. myself yep. or hearing a couple of questions makes me realize, oh, that's what's not clear about all this. So in, in addition to the mapping and how it works and the operational piece, if, if they can have some time and freedom available so that they're able to ask if people have questions, that they're able to mm -hmm. have time for questions, as any good presentation usually does, um, leave ample time for questions. I think, why not? People want to learn. It's a good thing. Sophie, anything? No, I agree because my question is, if not then, then when? So I think we can take time to have questions from the public that, that would be better. Yep. Okay. So we'll set that meeting for no November 20th at 5 p.m. And is it an hour and a half meeting? At least. Hour? Yep. Yep, hour we can, we can target like an hour and a half. Does sure. that seem Hour and a half. Let's yeah. make that our goal. Thank you. Good idea. Thank you. Forty-five minute presentation. Okay. The rest for question and discussion. Do we do we need to make a do we need to take a vote on that? Maybe it's an action item. Five minutes. Mm -hmm. Do you need us to vote on that? Um, I make a motion that we meet on November twentieth at five p.m. here <laughs> in the French room for the wastewater. Kind of wish we were meeting over there, but I can compromise. Keep in mind that at this time you will have done the open house. Mm. Already, yeah. I'll second that. It doesn't that. change my opinion. But Motion okay. made and seconded. All those in favor? Five zero. Thank you. Uh, discussion items eight a. Update from commission. Well, are we gonna? We're gonna talk about this, but we're obviously the Knox County commissioners are not here. We're gonna talk about the Knox County Dispatch uh, Center and other community county services. So I. <clears throat> You know, I just wanted to keep this on because, um, you know, we didn't we didn't know um, and didn't want to keep changing the agenda. But Commissioner Pullman has said that she can attend the November 8th meeting of the select board. So that's when she'd be available to give an update on all of this. So we could just, um, you know, sort of table this until then. I think so. Does everybody get uh, the sheriff's updates on the communication center? Everybody does. OK, yep. those seem to be. Thorough. Um, I'm not sure what I'm supposed to to do with any of that, though. It's, is somebody evaluating from the town whether action is needed? Because I'm not reading that and feeling like, oh, okay, I guess they've got it figured out. Somebody else that's professional is doing that, right? I mean, at least somebody's paying attention. There, I. Th can we appoint somebody? I, I'm to? pretty confident that everybody from the town who is a public safety professional that's reading them feels exactly the same way you do. Can one of them be in, you know, in charge of saying, this is when we would need to do something different? Um, like I noticed for Knox County, like in the lead up to the hurricane, um, normally there have been times, many of us went to that training years ago where we learned about the role of the county and how important our role is with disaster preparedness and things like that and so i was like oh i'm curious what are they sharing on their facebook page because i saw mimo was doing stuff and there was just nothing from the knox county ema when they go through periods of activity anyway i don't want to belabor that tonight but i just hope that it's a good time as we're doing the budget somebody is in charge of saying at some point we need to fund our own dispatch or we need to do an and that we don't feel that we're at the because no proposal has come to us for emergency funding or anything like that that we're not at a phase where we feel i would say everyone is still trusting knox county to fix this issue and giving them space to do it um i know that the um 
sorry, the Knox Regional Communication Center Executive Board or um, Advisory Board, I forget what their exact <clears throat> name was. They're still, they're still meeting to talk about this. And I would like our staff to be developing a, I thought kind of what we said at the last time, maybe Tom put it the most succinctly, that we didn't want to be in a position where we were just hoping um, that it's great to hope, but to also have a contingency plan too. Um, yeah, and I mean. That's a huge discussion though, because you can't piecemeal this place and not that place and have Camden be the only one that's broke off. It's just so much bigger than that. And I completely respect that because I have the same feelings, but it's a bigger discussion than just to say, we need to have our own plan because having our own plan and being the only one in Knox County that has our own plan that is like, yep, we're ready to pull the trigger and have our own center and we have three people. I'm not saying that would be is, the plan. Like, it's like, it's, in my point of view, I think we need to really put all of our efforts into supporting what's going on right now and, um, man, really, kind of hoping and, and if you're the praying type every night i think <laughs> yeah i mean i yeah. the i way, loved it when we had our own dispatch um well, yeah the way forward with this doesn't necessarily like if if there's anything different from it not being a county department i don't think it's us starting our own little shop <clears throat> because when you start to look into the technology investments and you know just everything that we would do to or need to do to get stand something up like that it's pretty it's yeah it's so it's more of the change would be in how the current dispatch center that we've all funded invested in pay for yearly is run and operated that's that's what we would need to push on but we have no legislative well that's why i've been asking all the local legislators to stay involved in all of this because we would need some help and uh, Pin Pinny uh, BB Center is actively involved from what I understand. She sent me an email. That's or, that's great because Penny used to be a county commissioner. Sure. So she's yeah. got um, some understanding that most local legislators wouldn't have because they haven't done that job before. Right. Yeah. Just, do we have any leverage or is there any opportunity to? I know I'd read somewhere that Rockport withheld their payment. Yeah, this is... This so is some, not leverage that we have. We were very um, prompt in paying that bill. Yeah, Rockford's good at that. <laughs> it's okay. Yeah. You know, having paid the bill, we have an additional hammer. We we can say we've paid our bill. Yeah. You know, there's there's this this is a partnership where we've up, we've fulfilled our, our our end of the deal, mm -hmm. and so they're beholden now to fill, fulfill their end of the deal to us. So, Sophie, do you have anything? No, I think I, I agree. With I, I find the process a bit murky and, and I would like a bit more clarity. Um, I'm, I don't think anybody's going to pull out because there's no one has a solution. So I think it's, it's really thinking about what we're, what are expectations and, and putting pressure on them to deliver, basically. But I don't think we have any other solution. Join Waldo County like we used to. Mm. But. So, so the important thing now is at least we are getting updates from the sheriff and what's going on. And um, I know I have you know, heightened awareness in, in talking with random folks about uh, services that are or are not going well. And I think it's important. And I'm sure that um, our own chiefs in public safety are staying abreast of it too. Um, it's important so that we know of those pieces and that they're well educated in what's going on. And uh, hopefully there is a good end to the process, but yes, it is hope. Uh, but at least until then, uh, there's decent communication from them about the details of what's going on. And hopefully we'll end with a situation where the, the public is served as it should be, but it's hope. So do you need a um, like recommendation that yes, we would like to accept her offer of coming on November 8th? How about you officially table it until November 8th, then you know it's okay. automatically gonna be put on again and we can, 
we can tell her, you know, we, we had a little discussion, but we tabled it and. and, we, and but we look forward to the update on November 8th. you coming back. Sure. So we're not ready to agree to her coming November 8th right now? We are, I'm ready. To, uh, we don't need to vote on her. We don't need to vote on it. Yeah, because she was supposed to, or, or we were hoping that she'd be able to come in tonight so is the way to put it. do we it. want to agree on also what the topic is going to be? Sort of what's in, or is it the county in general, the charter process, the... Um, I think now's your opportunity to talk about time? all of it. Because like, you know, what you were bringing up was EMA, which is different than dispatch. You know, we've had, we've had the. See, I'm not qualified to make. No, no, you are. Like, no, you are. I mean, like, like you don't have to know all of this to to know that there's something that you've noticed that we should bring up with them. I just you know. want to know that somebody else is that does know about all this is evaluating. So Stephanie, I guess you can tell me if um, you think we need to do something. But so, but you're right. It's that's where our you know chiefs of police in fire department. Um, and even our EMS folks, they should be able to have a say in an update. And I hope, I imagine they'll be here from November 8th as well, so we can hear their perspective and what they hear. You know, are there issues where the transition and the handoff is not working effectively from Waldo to dispatch? You know, are we having, causing additional stress and, and, and and bad things for those people who are dialing 911 if they lose connection. Maintaining that connection and conversation is very important. Um, are people going to the right locations uh, because of not being familiar with our particular towns? Um, knowing if those things are going on, yes, they can only be ultimately addressed with reasonable you know, people who are familiar. Um, but to know what those situations are in case there is something that needs to be done that is just not enabling our town to be safe. But so our chiefs should be here for November 8. We should hear about what's going well and we should hear about what's not going well um, from both sides to ensure that people understand what we're paying for and what we're getting for what we pay for. Please, Stephanie. So um, my last comment on this will be that both Camden and Rockport have sung the praises of what is going on right now through the whole storm this weekend. Um, I have heard and read online that um, things seem to go smoothly. I'm not saying that everything went exactly as planned, but with the call volume, and how people were able to respond. I mean, I think that is a huge kudos. So I think credit where credit is due. It was a huge test of where we're at. Um, and I think in the larger picture, um, the process that we have in place did work as it was supposed to. So. I just want to give huge kudos to everybody that played a part in that because, man, what a, what a test of where we're at. And to have both go online and give support of that is, I think it's pretty big, so. Allison. I, I guess that's what I would, I don't know where you read that um, or if you know it because of just, you're just more no, involved I, or if there's an official, I'm not saying, I'm not, I miss that is all I'm saying. Okay. Um, that maybe, I think at some point if we could schedule just an update on from our, from our chief's perspective, how are things going? What are, you know, they, what are they hearing? It, and, and most importantly, is there anything that they need from us to, to make it better? Or they would like us to be prepared for or, um, just to be able to hear that from time to time, to know that somebody's looking at it. And um, I don't know if they're them, give, do you think them giving their update during the Sharon Pullman meeting is the right time or? I do, if you want to get it to the public in one succinct, okay. succinct message, I do. And uh, just a question, um, do we want to have it really tight and narrow focus on dispatch or do you want to talk about other county services while she's here? To me, it's just dispatch, um, but 
See, to me, I've been waiting for so long, hoping to understand a little bit better, like what the county's priorities are, the charter review process, because that determines how, and maybe this happens somewhere else, but that determines how the portion that Camden pays, the rep representation that Camden gets, um, you know, how county government works, how many commissioners there are, just how the whole system works basically. And they, I've heard that they're going through a revision process or- Charter commission, yeah. Charter commission. So we saw, you know, it's not easy to get people involved in charter commissions. And we may, it's one of these things that really matters that we're stuck with for a long time after it gets reviewed. So some way of getting that information out to us and others. And I'm fine with it being at this meeting at, um, because it, I think it's important that we understand that the county is more than just dispatch. I heard Randy mention something about a problem with the jail during that same time. So I don't, I don't, you guys can all decide what makes sense to put on this agenda and what makes sense to schedule I think, for another I time. I think the dispatch is gonna be such a huge topic. I just don't wanna miss we our opportunity to, We need to focus charter. on dispatch, you know, the commissioner's update. And I think it's a great idea to have our chiefs there. Um, it's going to be big, and, and, yeah. and I think we should limit it to that, at least for this that particular night. It's also well, their budget time. I, so. I would leave it at public safety, which includes the jail pieces as well, because I think to understand what the picture is on that, I'm not such a big fan of, you know, if we've gotten 20 minutes, you know, a couple of minutes on the charter, but the majority being on the public safety issues um, that yeah. were addressed with with the other fella a couple mm -hmm. of meetings ago. There's the budget that's gonna be happening for them right now. So I just wanna make sure that we're not missing, we, we know what they're budgeting for in order to be able to accomplish the things that are needed. And then if we need to do different budgeting based on what we learn, um, there's a certain window of time where we can have the ability to act to make changes um, to have, and I don't wanna miss Mm -hmm. that with just updates but I feel like our liaison to the budget committee to the um, Knox County is going to keep us well apprised of who's that Peter Lindquist, Peter Lindquist. so in the past when we've wanted a our, he, there is he, it's not a liaison they're supposed to be elected um, sure. but and then when we've asked for update when I have thought oh that'll be the right way to do this we'll have the uh, budget committee representative from Camden come and talk to the select board about what the county's doing. And that wasn't um, well received um, hmm. because he was like, I'm elected by the people, not by you guys. And I don't need to be you. And it wasn't, I wasn't really meant to be that kind of a process, but it's very hard to get information about what the county is doing, even on their website. And um, yeah. anyway, I can, def well, all of these things are interconnected. So could our liaison do a better a better job then? Is that where the information not a liaison. Should, it's he's, not a liaison. He's just a representative. Uh, he's a budget okay. committee it's, member for Knox County. Well, we could have a liaison, that might help. It's a poor word. I'm <clears> sorry. <throat> I didn't mean to So let's let's stay let's stay on track here. Maybe Let, we could tell him let's about let's stay on the discussion item. Uh, is there anything else that anybody would like to comment on on inviting the Knox County commissioners to come here and discuss county dispatch? and potentially other county safety, public safety issues. We'll do that on November 8th, so we'll, we'll table it yep. for now. Yep. yep. Okay, item 8B, the budget review process for fiscal year 2025, which uh, I'm looking forward to talking about this. Yeah, so I, I didn't want to put a draft schedule in your packet and scare everybody because there's, it, um, it does look daunting from you know, the multiple meetings outside of March. Um, and I don't expect the select board to attend those unless you would really like to. Um, so the, you know, the idea is, uh, I guess, let me back up to start with some of the changes that would affect the select board. So I've heard a real desire amongst budget committee members as well as select board members for the review of the budget to be combined. So the select board comes to all of those meetings anyway, and we sort of have run with a inherited process for the past few years where the select board just sits there silent, doesn't ask questions, doesn't answer questions when the budget committee's doing 
um, you know, their March review of the budget. And I, I don't think that model's working anymore. Uh, the budget committee doesn't like it because they would like it to be a little bit more of a collaborative back and forth with the select board. They'd like the benefit of the knowledge that you all have about um, priorities and town operations and um, policy that you're trying to implement. So they would like that the budget review meetings in March to be a joint process where the select board's here, you get to participate. It's, you know, the um, budget committee chairs would still be the ones who run the meeting, but, you know, most of you would show up at those meetings and you would participate just like the budget committee does. And you'd get all the same information at the same time and be able to ask questions of department heads or me or, you know, anybody else who's presenting. So that was, that was sort of a major change that they wanted to see. And so I wanted to talk about all of that with you to see if that was, you know, if I, if I had the right impression that that's something that you would prefer or not. Does the public get a chance to attend those two? Are they open? All meetings are public. All meetings well, that we do said, are public. She said no. <laughs> so I no no they do they do they do they do but I think I mean I I I know with Audra and I we had this conversation a long time ago on, on making making the budget process more like a joint joint workshops with the select board. I think it's a, it's a great idea. Um, I I support that without. Um, uh, removing the budget process, the budget committee from making their own recommendation. That is a great point in time for both bodies to ask questions and clarification, and but still uh, have the budget committee make their own recommendation on the budget. Yeah, so that's a that's a good point. The re, even though the review would be everyone together, you'd all ask questions, hear the presentations. Yeah. The budget committee would still be just mm -hmm. voting on their items. So we're meetings. no different than a member of the public in that regard, and, that, and that's fine. And members of the public can also attend, mm -hmm. and they can ask questions too? Yes. Allison. So um, what I saw happen before um, with the budget committee, when I was on the budget committee, was there was, um, sim in a similar way to select board meetings, there was a section that was reserved um, at the beginning for, and sometimes maybe it was each time they did a, a vote or each section of it, there was a public comment opportunity depending on how many people were there, but, but also just an opportunity for people, public comment on non-agenda items and sort of that, that covered the public participation. Um, aspect of it if you start allowing every member of the public to have the same you know be able to raise their hand at all the same times as you know the members of the committee and the select board i can see how that would get out of hand but just um you know giving people the opportunity to say just like they can come and speak on an agenda item here they could do that in a certain way there too and the, but the select board my understanding is that we would be kind of sitting with the budget committee um, and, and understanding that, you know, our role is supposed to be a little bit less, not, I don't want to say speak when spoken to, but maybe, um, it's, you know, sometimes we might not be able to attend every meeting just because we already have so many mm -hmm. meetings. But I think that would be a big improvement because it's been so frustrating for some in the past to you know, they, they wish that they had been able to hear a little bit during their discussion rather than having to listen to what we really think at the very end. Um, and that with a smaller budget committee, hopefully we can make that work. Um, has there been any talk of professional facilitation? No, we didn't really, we didn't really talk about that. Uh, Stephanie? So, um, I just need to review it a little bit more black and white because it's late and I'm tired. Mm. Um, you're saying that during the budget um, committee's process, we would have more input at that time 
to discuss back and forth with the town's um, managers. When it comes to select board review, um, the expectation would be that they wouldn't come at those meetings necessarily Not and necessarily. give the same updates. We would be able to still have our own discussions yeah based on that you're we're not combining it in the sense that the select board doesn't have their own oh, right right you'd still do your own review in the end okay yeah okay the you'd same as do, before yeah because I'm, I'm just thinking about the charter mm -hmm. kind of yeah. states it that way yeah no you still would you'd still do your own review in the end it's it's more of instead of you sitting there silently and there's no back and yeah. forth there's no Okay. collaboration around things you can't answer questions you can't ask questions you'd all be okay. going through that together with the thought process that it would help the budget members get to a final a little bit better yeah they I, I think that there's a real feeling that um, you have sort of a valuable perspective to bring to the budget process that they don't get the benefit of when you're sitting there silently and you can't and you can't so like awkward. yeah I don't disagree I just don't want to ever make the budget committee feel like we're um we're not valuing their presence and their yeah and, but they're and set actually up to do this sort of came out of the the feeling that um they it's they feel like their work isn't valued when they they have all these meetings and then the select board does their review and maybe they didn't get to see the meeting or maybe there's you know the things that they weren't able to ask you questions about and they just end up seeing kind of like the final changes and there isn't any back and forth about that whereas if you were here and say an item came up that um you know there they did have questions of all of you you did have opinions about it maybe like here's an example um with the karen grove made a motion about putting thirty thousand in for the montgomery dam um hmm. repairs or maintenance or whatever and she was very adamant about putting it in the operational budget but there wasn't really anything that could be done with it in that year and i sort of had explained we don't like to you know that puts us in a position where we're inevitably going to be carrying it forward into a new financial year that's what reserve accounts are for because you you have them and you can build them up over time and that's what she was saying that she wanted to do and so the select board made the decision they they still you still all funded that but you funded it in a reserve account but if you're a budget committee member that maybe didn't see that or didn't want to sit through the you know four hour discussion to get to that sort of 15 minute portion mm -hmm. you would have missed that you wouldn't you wouldn't have seen that yes the select board did take into account the discussion around that and see the value in it. They just included it in a different part of the budget for <clears throat> other reasons that were, you know, valid reasons and, and still took into account the will of the committee and what they wanted to achieve. So I guess it's more of stuff like that when you're able to well, hammer out clarifying. some of those details yeah. or, you know, whatever the case may be. I would think of it a little bit more almost like when they are saying what they want to do. When I was listening to that, I just wanted to ask like two clarifying questions because we're trying to interpret what they wanted to do. And, and then we had to ask, remember there was one budget committee member was like, the committee wanted this. And it, sometimes just a couple of questions help us to better understand like what they're actually trying to do. Right. And, and likewise, they would, be, they would be invited to your review to... Yeah. Yeah, I, I have no problem um, with this. I would, um, I'm just thinking in the future, if we have very um, strong personalities on the select board that like to um, usurp. <laughs> I'm not really sure the word, but just very strong um, opinions. I would hate to see that we've created a situation where then they overtake and 
go further, but yeah, I'm, right. I'm not opposed you to know, this and that, at all. And I'm honestly, just, that was the reason but, why we were kind of in the old right. I know. silent, silent I know. sitting That's, system. So I think everybody right. is mm -hmm. under that um, process. So I think that we will be able to mitigate that, but that would be my only hang up. Yeah. Sophie? But I think we can, yeah, we can mitigate this by having clear rules um, or, or, you know, set up, you know, rules of engagement, if you will, that this is still the budget committee meeting, that the select board are joining as a resource and not as a decision maker, but more as a resource body can answer questions. Um, and similarly, the select board still has a process to review the budget. So those two things are very clearly established. Um, we're just creating this kind of workshop format so that we are a resource for the budget committee. So we're not going to influence their decision. We're not going to make them change their mind. We're really there to answer questions that we can see in past budget committees they wanted to ask of us and could not. Thank you. I, I think this change is going to lead to <clears throat> better collaboration and more consensus. Um, I, I saw how the budget committee process went last year, and I think we can improve on it with this, with this new format. This is just where I feel like if there were the right person that could be hired to, to do a little bit of, or you know, professionally chairing the meeting, or a, really a lot of this is controlling what the select board does and what they don't, or what, how they're influencing or not, we all are going to have slightly different views of that, and a chairperson is really in the role of saying, hey, select board, it's great to have you here, but, so, but sometimes they don't feel comfortable doing that. And so, so. We, have, <clears throat> we have strong chairs on this committee, though. Mm -hmm. Jill, Jill and, and Sarah are, are both strong, and I, I really feel like this we should board... should tell them, like, make sure they know that it's their job we to... We will, and this board is united on this right now. So I, I think for fiscal year 2025, 20, it's a this is a good opportunity to try this. We we don't have to live in fear of that. I don't believe at least for fiscal year 2025. Okay. Okay. So that's that's kind of the mm -hmm. the biggest the biggest adjustment to the process. So another thing that I you know we're going to invite them on the tours of departments and try to do some of the um, departmental overview stuff with them. So that's all optional for you to attend. We'll publish the schedule. You'll get invitations. We'll um, advertise it as joint budget committee select board meetings just so that none of you have to worry about if, you know, if we have a quorum and, every, you know, so we'll take care of all of that, but there's no obligation for you to come to all of them. You already have a lot of meetings, so no expectation about that. The only, the only one that I would like everyone to commit to is a January meeting um, because that's a really good time before we start getting into sort of the nitty gritty of the budget development. You know, hearing from the select board um, about priorities that you would like us to be looking at for the upcoming budget, as well as, you know, there are some committees that have, you know, projects that they like to bring forward to the select board or like to bring forward to the budget committee. So I think having that sort of joint select board budget committee meeting and then giving um, you know committees the opportunity to come in if they have projects and talk about them, you know, really just sort of like a, a time where you have the opportunity to tell us what you would like us to consider in the upcoming budget so that when we're developing it, we're able to take into account those priorities and the budget committee is able to hear it and any you know, other committees who might have things that they want to be considered also have the opportunity to, to talk about those. So that's, that's another thing that I think would be helpful and make the whole budget development process better is if we have that meeting before we really get into it to, yeah. to do that. Thank you. We haven't said a 2025 calendar I was all. thinking kind of late January would be a good time to do that. Early enough. Oh, I'm sorry. I yeah. thought that next, I thought we were talking about this budget coming up because that's for 2025. We are. Yep. Okay. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I'm sorry. We haven't said the 2024. I misspoke. Okay. We're talking 2025 fiscal year, but like, uh, mm -hmm. so January 2024, we haven't, we haven't said any 2024 uh, select board 
Should we wait on this until we set the select board calendar before we set oh, the Oh, yeah, date we first? don't need to set this now. Okay, we got just a January time. ethereal. Yeah, it's more of just the, the concept of having a January meeting where that's the that's sure. what we're trying to achieve. Yep. Um, and then, you know, and then other than that, it's the, you know, sort of the March um, overview. The hope is that the meetings are shorter because we've done a lot of the prep work ahead of time and that, um, you know, we're able to stick to a March schedule. So the budget committee does their review and you all do your review in March. Yeah. And then you have a little more leeway for, um, you know, like public, public comment periods or informational meetings if you want certain things highlighted to the public. We just ha would have more breathing room before the warrant has to be approved to do all of that stuff. As long as we've got plenty of different times for the public to do their input into the discussion and it's efficient last year it was, was kind of crammed in it seemed and uh, the more open we can be in getting the public input i think that's great the, the key on that chris is, is what what happened last year i believe is we we had to vote on it before we had the public input yeah and this year we're going to make sure we've we've committed to that um but we'll yeah. we'll double check we'll double down on that yeah. make sure it's correct uh, when we set the budget meet, uh, schedule. Anything else, board, on this? Is there anything else that, that we haven't talked about that you would all like to see as part of the review process or that you think would make it better? Facilitate. No, I mean, I think the committee stuff is a smart thing because um, it used to be that committees would kind of make their own budget requests, and I've been trying to explain to the ones that I'm liaison for that we're trying to encourage them to follow the regular budget process and make requests not to have in their own little designated area, but to make sure that, you know, the public works budget includes trees or something as, as the Conservation Commission. So giving them an opportunity to be able to say, this is where you can, that would, I hope that will save some of the confusion on the back end. Um, so, yeah, thanks for spending some time on this it seems like um definitely something to try yeah and um, thank you sarah and jill and jody they all spent a lot of time going over this too sure that's awesome. yeah that's great that it's coming from them and i agree yeah. they're really good and it's great that they're still willing to do this yeah and, and i credit to you know so many people on there they um some of them think it's fun and are really excited <laughs> to do it again and uh you know they were they were perfectly ha like even me telling them you know like we're thinking of doing more meetings outside of march and it being sort of more of an ongoing thing and you know most of them were yeah they're they're enthusiastic about participating so that's i am actually wonderful. really excited about that because i've been trying to get like just a better understanding of different departments I know when I was on the personnel board, we were going to do a tour. Yeah. It never happened. So I am certainly looking forward to that. I'm not going to be able to make all of them, I'm sure, but I am looking forward to that. So, okay. Yeah, definitely. And I mean, I know that it's hard to kind of think up these things. So, yeah, if, if something kind of comes to mind, let me know because I think that this is, this is our chance to, you know, we, and we can, we can tweak it year after year, but I think like this is a good year to, completely change how we do it. Sure. Sophie? Yeah, I think a primer on the, the structure of the budget and the general fund, the reserves fund, they're so, I feel like every year the budget committee um, does not have a good understanding of the overall kind of chart of account of the budget in a very mm -hmm. you know, kind of simple, simple way. Or I know like it's a but, but especially the general fund, the reserves, and the, the capital expenses. The rest, it's, it's pretty much a cash budget, so it's not too hard to understand. But okay. What this about is my recommendation. Go ahead, Allison. Um, along that same line, maybe whatever is appropriate for an introduction on the um, personnel related expenses and how like the COLA, the history of the COLA, and what's normal, and just to give people a little bit of background on that stuff, and an understanding of where, um, like, level of staffing, and how so much of the budget is staffing, and what the appropriate 
way might be to either increase or re reduce that line and there's been there's been confusion about how to go about trying to impact those parts of the budget and hopefully in a way that is less painful for town staff or just prevents confusion great good point good all right Thank you, Audra. That's good. I like the I like the changes. Uh, item eight C, not, not double B, mm. cruise ships in Camden Harbor. Uh, oh my! You know this started. Cruise ships in Camden Harbor. <laughs> <laughs> Who wants to start us up? Was there any information that I missed? Was there, yeah. No, no, because no. I I wasn't really really <laughs> sure how to approach ready. this one. I mean, I can tell you what. I know about how this works. So um, Camden uh, used to be a member of an organization called Cruise Maine, which is sort of like a um, privately run organization that's funded by the Maine Office of Tourism. And it's to coordinate um, you know, cruise ships that are um, calling into Maine ports <clears throat> and if you're a member of Cruise Maine, you're automatically sort of marketed to the cruise lines. And when we were a member, and, and I don't think that, you know, the reason why um, American Cruise Lines, that was the um, line that would come through here and they had the smaller boutique cruise ships that would, that would stop here and tender passengers in. I, I don't think it was just the fact that we um, decided to no longer be members of Cruise Maine. That also coincided with the pandemic and with um, you know just some concerns during 2020 about them um, calling into Camden Harbor um, and a discussion that the select board had around that, which I think kind of like, um, even though nobody said we don't want cruise ships, they're very sensitive. The cruise lines are very sensitive to this. They pay a lot of attention. So even if you don't say we don't want you here, any talk about maybe them not coming is enough to kind of, um, it's, it's enough of a chilling effect that they don't come. So I think those things, like it was a timing thing. It was uh, um, that we were no longer members of that uh, organization that marketed us to the cruise lines, um, that they just kind of stopped coming and we haven't, come back as part of their their rotation like they still are um, accessing Camden through Rockland uh, and we're still very much on their itineraries like if you look at the American Cruise Line you know trip schedule for like the fall their fall foliage tours Camden is a stop for them but they're it's with their tour buses um, so that's that's really all I know about about that I, the chamber of course is very active and you know promoting this region to the to the cruise lines um how big were the ships that used to come here i don't remember well we had a in the ordinance i think it was no more than 175 passengers was that right sophie i think yeah it's 175 yeah. passengers and the issue for instance the emerald princess that came last week who did not stop in Camden, by the way they only stopped in rockland um we, we would not have been able to accommodate them for capacity because they're, they're way too big for us. So there is a capacity issue here to um, ferry people, basically from ferries to the town landing or steamboat landing. Yeah, and I, I guess you know some of Pixley's feedback is that um, you know even with the smaller ones, sometimes it could be a challenge because they tender everybody yeah. in to the landing and that you know you didn't always have the most experienced drivers doing that and there were you know there would sometimes be issues with like the speeding and wakes and just the amount of people that kind of thing so you know his uh his recommendation is if they do come back um trying to get them to steamboat landing and i, I was saying to steve well that solves your problem but that doesn't solve the <laughs> no, bus problem you know like it's the same no. it's the same issue right for everybody else, so anyway, but, it's but a also if if we're gonna have people disembarking, I mean, usually those cruise lines also the average age of people is quite high, and so um, if we're if we're gonna have people disembarking at Steamboat Landing, it really needs to be rebuilt because the worm is not safe, you know, if you if you have mobility issues. 
Well, it's a matter of people movement. I mean, that's, is that really the, our most beautiful part of the town that we'd want to have people see? Granted, it was used as a steamboat uh, landing, and it has the name for a reason. Um, but there's really no but, point. It doesn't solve yeah. the bus there's issue. There's no point, yeah. I mean, it, it, what would the folks from the chamber or the business uh, coffee group at 8 in the morning, what would they like to see? Do they want to have cruise ships? I would think they would. It's more business, but I don't know. I actually um, haven't even had this conversation with them at all. We have um, haven't talked about the cruise ships since the pandemic. Um, with this conversation tonight, I, I was just kind of more in my own mind wondering what, what does people feel, um, you know, what is your personal feeling kind of on this, given the fact that we have a very busy harbor? Um, I'm, I, I don't know what to think about it. I, I would like to have other thoughts. Allison. There, there are a couple of other issues, by the way. Um, Next. So recently, the people who came last year, on the, last week on the cruise ship, um, they were looking for places to have lunch or did or an early dinner, but the cruise ship does not schedule the pickups on the bus right now, uh, allowing you enough time for them to actually sit down and have lunch. So there's there's a, those complications that they can't really spend that much time in Camden either. Um, maybe we could work with the cruise line to make it more beneficial for the for the restaurants and shops in Camden uh, because the, the cruise tend to want you to spend money on the boat, not in port of calls. So it, it's, it's, and, and I've heard, I've heard every, every piece of feedback from super excited about having cruise ship visitors to very negative feedback about trying to avoid them at all costs. So I think there's a, there's a wide diff, you know, from shopkeepers, shop owners, and from businesses. So, uh, I don't think it's, a, it's an issue we can solve today. The question we really need to ask ourselves is, do we want to re-engage with, with, do we want to re-engage with the cruise ship line to make it, to make that more attractive? Do we want to have more people, more visitors? Are we satisfied with the status quo right now with the buses coming in from Rockland and, and actually using the town green bus uh, stop quite nicely? We haven't received any complaints from uh, steamboat planning and Wayfair and people living in the condo over there uh, where we used to receive like many complaints a, a summer because the buses were put parked there. So it's really a, a matter of what we want to achieve and what more do we want to do or what less we want to do. Not really helping you, Stephanie, sorry, but... No. <laughs> what do you feel like, Sophie, is kind of what I'm thinking. I mean, I, I heard these concerns at the Harbor Committee this morning as well, but like, what are you thinking, your personal feelings? I, I think we're fine the way we are. I, I, I think we have, you know, good, we solve the issue of buses. I'm not sure I want to have them in the harbor because it, it'll be something else to manage. And our, our, our harbor is busy in the summer. Um, my, my, my personal, if you're asking from my personal point of view, we're good as we are. Allison? So I wasn't fully prepared to give my, you know, cruise ship manifesto. Um, I think that they're very different. What I've understood is, you know, everybody has something in their mind when they think of cruise ships. And for the most part, the ones that were coming here until recently are just not that it's not what people are thinking it's not the emerald obviously we can't accommodate the 3,000 passengers on the emerald princess and that little blurb in the newspaper um was very funny because it did make it very much seem like they were going to be pulling up and um you know guarding up mount batty um so but i think that there are a lot of i like the idea of camden being accessible to people and there are we're welcoming people that all they're arriving in their own personal vehicles with when each one needs a parking spot and that there is some value, you know, there's competition for bus parking too. And there is some value in, you know, more people arriving to, together. 
and that what was happening before was, was like the normal for camp. And the bus problem over at Steamboat Landing was caused because people had enjoyed, they would arrive on the you know, 100, 150 person cruise ship, and then they would take a tender, and they were doing it in various ways, but they wanted to go out on a smaller boat, um, and that was the peri periwinkle, right? Um, and so they really enjoyed that, and they wanted to go out and do those cruises that they had enjoyed in Camden. So then when they stopped, the 150-person boat stopped coming here, and they would just go to Rockland, then those people have to arrive by bus in order to continue doing the thing that they liked doing in Camden. And so that created a new problem, which was the buses needing to go to Steamboat Landing. I think that we shouldn't... Um, I've also heard very mixed reviews. Um, I think there should be, we should determine whether, um, I think a little bit more public input, but you know, a lot of the galleries I've heard say that they sold paintings and things to these people and then they would ship them sometimes. Um, so I've had just a lot of people ask me, why did they stop coming? And trying to get to the bottom of like, is that because we did something or um, they just weren't interested? But I do think that it's worth possibly opening the door to maybe there's a, a price point. Mm -hmm. um, and I mean, I'm very, I don't have a really strong opinion. I think it depends, but I don't really like the idea that Camden would be saying, no, you know, unless you own your own boat, you know, can it, then you can't arrive to Camden. I like the idea of cruise, those types of cruises are accessible to a wider like income range of people than somebody that can just pull up at the dock. Um, so I'm open-minded about it. Yeah, and if the, if we, you know, if the, also is it a timing issue? You know, um, as you yeah. mentioned, some of the cruise ships have us in the leaf peeping season. Yeah. I wouldn't imagine that that is the busiest time for our harbor. You know, right. are there certain times of the year when we might be uh, more welcome to increased uh, small boat traffic because that's what it ends up being. The um, coming from the cruise ships. Um, yeah, I like when I come through town and I see that there's a busload of people and people walking around with their name tags on, um, spending money in the shops. I think that's, that's great. It adds a little bit of, of liveliness and interest and other people interested in enjoying the town. Whether they get here by a bus from Rockland, you know, those seem like they're convenient enough, you know, spots over there or if there is a time of year when people can um, come by boat because the harbor is less busy, um, I think that's great. Again, the best, you know, so we can be welcoming yet, you know, efficient. Um, and if it benefits the people who own the shops in town, let's serve lunch faster to get them lunch. <laughs> <laughs> they probably disagree. It's like people tend to, there's not a united, it would be so easy sometimes if it was like the united position of the shopkeepers <laughs> is this or that. Um, but it's Are there so, negatives that happen to the shops as a result yes, of the cruise ships? There what, are what, are, what are some, some of the negatives. negatives? They don't all agree on this, unfortunately. What are, what are some of the disagreements about it? Uh, people think very low uh, ticket items like trinkets um, and um, some people prevent like, Oh. It's a common. And they like come all at once and they <laughs> want to do things quickly and they yeah. interfere with the people that might be yeah. shopping. But not everybody seems to mm. agree. Right, not but everybody. Just, yeah, this is not united. Just to clarify, something, just to clarify a couple points. Number one, um, today uh, we do have a cruise ship fee on our fee schedule for the harbor right. uh, usage. So we're not closed to cruise ships. If, if a cruise ship wants to come, uh, we can, you know, one of the smaller ones, we can make arrangements. We have no prohibition right now. With, we, we haven't stopped uh, welcoming cruise ships. They, they have, you know, as Audra said, for most of reason, they, they're not only in Rockland. The second piece of information What's that, that you <coughs> know is that uh, they bought the bus line. So they also made that investment. Anyway, um, I, yeah, I, I do think we need more public input for sure. Uh, but right now we don't need to change anything because we have we have it on our fee schedule. 
the harbor master knows about it, Ottawa knows about it. I don't don't know what we, we would want to do to change the, our current position, basically. So we were a member of what's it called again? Cruise Maine. Is we're that not. something that we had to pay to be a part of? Seriously? Yeah. Oh, interesting. Yep. And what is the fee for cruise ships at this point? I, is it per passenger or is it as a? Okay, well that's fine. We don't know. So, um, I can't remember but either, Sophie. Six hundred dollars. I want to say six fifty, like something like that. Hmm. So we paid to be a part of something that we we somebody made a decision to to not pay that anymore, but and that was viewed as oh, as not wanting it. I I agree that we shouldn't probably be paying to be a part of something. I agree. I think that I think uh, so. we, we do have to accept and, and really support that tourism is a significant portion of our economy here. And um, we should continue on the course that we are on, which is we welcome cruise ships. There's a harbor fee for cruise ships, but we don't need to necessarily advertise or pay a subscription fee to attract cruise ships. Unless, you know, we, we decide further uh, with public input that that's what the significant portion of the public wants us to do. And the max, maybe just to communicate very clearly to the maximum number of passengers. 175. The, okay, so. Yeah, and the, um, just the American uh, cruise line ships that came in, like the American, they're all, it's like the American glory, the American eagle, the American independence. Those were all like 100, 100 person ships mm -hmm. around that much. They're, yes. Yeah. Like Good. the river cruise ships. Yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah, and, and they do go up to like Bangor through the river. Nice. Yeah. Cool. It's good. Okay. Good discussion. All right. Uh, agenda item number nine, which is agenda items for upcoming meetings. Uh, I do have, I, Sophie, I received your email. Um, so I know that you have some ideas. And uh, I think I already discussed some of those with Audra. Um, Anybody else want to bring up specific items or uh, stuff for? Well, uh, we had talked before about, uh, and Jeremy was going to come back at some point with the public property uh, list so we can discuss pro public property usage, like Lake Beach yeah. and the public landing and whatnot. So, um, oh, like license agreements. If, if, if that is not a agenda topic, if it could maybe at least be part of the manager's report, if it's appropriate there. Yeah, I, I like that, Chris. It's a good idea. Um, I don't quite know where to put those things in our meeting agendas currently, where we have people reaching out to us about things like safety issues on Lime Rock Street that someone's concerned about, or someone's concerned about why isn't the paving, why is the end of Free Street a big pothole? Um, there are certain little things like that, that um, I don't know where those, I don't know where those belong, but they belong somewhere to be, to let people know that we're addressing them. Sure. We as a town, you know. So um, the, the way we've dealt, dealt with it in the past is those are operational uh, mm -hmm. in general. Um, and maybe forward the email to the town manager and she can you know get it to where it needs to go um audra it, from my experience is very good about responding to that and usually not just responding to me but also responding to the person who sent the email with a with an update but I, I don't think it's necessarily policy for every time somebody no. wants a public safety issue we do we are developing as we know public safety processes like the uh the road stuff what do we do the, yeah like the traffic calming. traffic calming yeah um yeah uh, if it so, gets yeah like with stuff stuff like that sometimes <laughs> yeah sometimes I, we've already been in contact with them and they're just sort of looping you all in as well right yeah Allison. But I do feel, like for Go instance, ahead. the traffic calming policy, I do feel that we need to educate the public more about it, because I'm wondering also how many, yeah. how many times has it been used? Um, we, we have, the, that was actually my, yeah, we have one coming up. Lime Rock Street residents, I believe, just completed a traffic calming Request. submitted it so we're actually going to great get a great opportunity to I put that into practice so right now that have been so we've got c street we've got um belmont ave 
and lime rock. Yeah. Maybe hard. So that was my uh, comment was going to be, can we get an update on how that's going? Because it was quite a while ago that a number of concerns drove us to develop the policy for how to communities or how neighborhoods can go through this. And then I'm not aware of any implementation. We're about yet. to get it though. So well, that's the thing we're but about. There are a bunch of, there, so there are a bunch of, so, so you saying Lime Rock Street tonight, there are a bunch of streets ab ahead of Lime Rock Street that are wondering what's going have they, on. Have and they so, actually fulfilled their, fulfilled yes. their application? Yeah, yeah. So, so we're, yeah, they're we've got to a us. few that were in like um, data collection yeah. phase with them. So yeah, just yeah, to yeah. know that something is actually Go happening, on. because the allegation is that this is just a process we're sending people through to not arrive at anything, which it would be easy from the public perspective to be like, my stop sign got taken away with no process. And then I have to go through this process to get it back, which doesn't seem, and when I would like to be able to say, this is the process that Central Street went through. But there's, if we could have a success story of it actually leading to something, that would be helpful. The only success story I have so far is Gould Street, which was just hmm. hammer the select word with emails until we- sure. Yeah, I do think um, that if you're patient with it, you're going to see that we're about to get through a full process and then the public will be able to see that that full process came to some fruition, whether it's successful or not. Um, we've been collecting data on Belmont Ave then for quite some time. Um, but sure, it's, it's just, mm -hmm. I think we're aware of Lime Rock Street because we got that email. Sure. But there's a bunch of other stuff of people that have gone through the process without involving the select board because that's not part of the process. Sure. That are feeling like... I just, I'm, all I'm asking for is an update to, mm -hmm. at some point yeah. on okay. how many things we've received and then being able to see the data um, about enforcement of speeding and just, just, um, just an uh, update. Sounds good. I'm writing it down. Anything else? Do we ever need to circle back on the, and maybe this is better for me to write in an email. This is the other thing. I'm not sure sometimes whether it's better to hash out agenda items here or whether an email I think is, we should be open about it myself but that's me sometimes I think so there's ask. a little bit of damage to being like so I got this email and I don't know if this is true mm -hmm. or not I think part of that is why we elect a chair that can help to I can say hey Tom this came to me and then there's a discussion about whether that belongs on an agenda or doesn't mm -hmm. belong on an agenda because we always end up when we suggest agenda items in this format, we inevitably also end up making a, a case for it a little bit. And that leads to a discussion that can't be a complete discussion. So I'm thinking that maybe I should stop myself from just coming up with ideas right now and that I could put them on a list like we were. Yep, sort of that's good. Through. You're always welcome to email Audra and I. Or, you know. um, so Stephanie brought up Tuesday. Um, and the um, upcoming meeting with uh, team building. Mm -hmm. um, we don't have a location for that meeting yet. We do, and I'll, I'll email it to all of you. Uh, okay. Yep. Okay. Just getting, Super. I'm confirming and making sure. Bless you, sure Sophie. That... <laughs> 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 Missed it. Um, okay. So, the, just for the public's, knowledge the this is a workshop it's going to be open to the public is it going to be public comment no okay i just want to make sure yeah okay that the expectation is set this is a select board mm -hmm. family meeting yes <laughs> family meeting Here we go. with all the things that come with the family, family meeting. <laughs> <laughs> but you can watch anything um, else if you come. I'm just saying. All right. It's important. It's the next item on their agenda is adjournment. Anybody want to help? I'll make a motion that we adjourn. I'll second. Motion made and seconded. All those in favor? Five zero. Sophie, thank you for toughing Bye, it out. Sophie. <laughs> That's impressive.